Building Thinking Classrooms, Automated Grading Rubric. Welcome everybody to version 5.0 of this awesome rubric. My name is Tim Brzezinski and on behalf of my colleague, Melissa McCain, we would like to welcome you to this rubric, show you how to use it quickly for those of you that are brand new and for those of you that have been using it, version 4.0 and 3.0 in the past few years, we're gonna show you some pretty slick new features that's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So let's dive in and let's begin here. So the link you're going to want to go to is right there, tinyurl.com slash BTC rubric, tinyurl.com slash BTC rubric. Again, feel free to pause the video whenever you need it so you can follow along side by side and see how I'm doing it. You can also do it for your classes as well. So I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to rock and roll. Let's do it. So right here, let me just go ahead and share my screen. Okay, we'll do that. And give me one second. Got to share my desktop and we'll get started right here. So I've already made my own copy right here, as you can see. Um, it's entitled right here, BTC Demo. Once you make a copy, you obviously want to title it the way you want it to, the, the way you want it to, the way you want to, that is. All right. This is the settings page. Okay. And so right here, you have a, down here, you have four main pages that show up. You have settings, you have a class list page, all right, which I've put three students in already. You have unit details page, which I've already started uh, creating a, a sample unit here called Foundations of Geometry. Again, your course is your course. You're going to fill this with objectives that are relevant to you. And um, right here, a student averages tab, which we'll get to later. Okay, the first thing you want to make sure, especially for those of you that are brand new, is to know what does my district define as a minimum passing score here? If you look right here, right, in Peter's book in Building Thinking Classrooms, where he's from in Canada, a 50% is the minimum grade required to pass, right? Now, where I teach in New Haven, Connecticut, for me, it's 60%. So I can go ahead and change that 50 to a 60 here, right? And the 2, 3, 4 becomes 3, 4, 5. So in, uh, in Peter's book, he uses 50%, right? Because technically a 2 out of 4 is 50%. Now, um, the logic of Peter's research is that if a student, if a student can only demonstrate knowledge of concepts at a basic level, then they should earn the minimum passing score for the course, which in the example he used is 50%. Where I am from in New Haven, again, 60%. See how three out of five is 60. And in theory, if I was at a rigorous school where, oh my gosh, we need a 75 to pass, well, six, seven, eight makes the most sense because six out of eight minimum passing is, is 75%. Again, you need to do what works for you here. You could fiddle with this number all you want. I'm just gonna keep it at the default at 50, all right? And so right here, what we want to do is go ahead and look at the class list. I've inputted three names already. All right. Unit details I filled out a little bit, but we have no student sheets yet. So we need to create those sheets. And doing that is as easy as the click of a button. Literally. Look right here. So right here, I'm going to go to BTC menu right up here. Those of you uh, old time users of this uh, rubric, notice this looks very different now. Okay. So we're going to create student tabs. For the very first time, we're going to create tabs. We're going to talk about the difference between these two right here in just a second. Okay. So we're going to create those tabs. Now, authorization required. When you do this for the first time, Google is going to ask you for permission to run this amazing Google script that Melissa McCain has authored from scratch. Melissa gets all the credit for everything that works amazingly well here. All right. I'm just uh, the humble messenger. I'm so grateful to be able to share this with you here today. So let's go. Now, full rebuild. This will delete all tabs. Well, there's no tabs to delete, right? No student tabs, right? And create them from the master template. So here we go. I hit yes. Watch the bottom. We are getting student sheets made right here, right now. One for Tim Brzezinski, Peter, and I think Melissa herself. This was a class full of three students, right? And the cool part is it alphabetizes it. See what I mean? See right here. Well, oh, it created it. Thank you. Right here, if you look at it. Right. These are in alphabetical order. If you put these in unalphabetical order or not alphabetical order, it'll automatically alphabetize it for you. And another cool feature here is that if you click on a hyperlink here, it'll link it right to the student sheet. See, that's Peter's sheet right there. OK, if you click on me. It links it to my sheet or Melissa's sheet, if that makes sense. And another cool added bonus feature. Let's suppose you're currently like three quarters of the way down in the year and you're on unit eight. Well, you know what? It would be a pain in the butt to click on the link and then have to scroll all the way down, right? You don't have to do that anymore, all right? Because right here, if I click on Peter's sheet, look at that. It starts at unit eight, okay? Pretty neat, pretty wild. So, all right, that's that. 
But now teachers always have asked us in the past, hey, Tim, Melissa, what happens when a student comes in in the middle of the year? Or let's suppose, oh, shoot, you know what? Let's suppose Melissa drops the class, all right? And now um, I get two new students. Let's call them, uh, uh, I don't know, Cody B and I don't know, um, Letitia M, something like that. I get two new students in my class, but another one drops. How do I do this? Well, easy. Don't mess with anything down here. Google will do it for you. Go to where now it says sync student tabs. I'm sorry, not create student tabs, uh, a sync student tabs, my bad. This lets you keep your student data that exists already. I know I have not, I know I have not put data into any students tabs yet, but if you hit create student tabs, it's gonna wipe out data and just replace it more. But if you, um, if you do sync that, if you do sync student tabs right here, all right, we'll be good to go. So we'll sync it and watch this, all right? So it's gonna tell you what it's gonna do. It's gonna, Google right here says, we're gonna delete Melissa's, we're gonna add Cody and Letitia, all right? And so this is what it's gonna look like at the very end. Do you want us to proceed? Proceed with caution. Nah, you know what it wants, you hit yes, right? And there you go, watch this. Watch the tab, tab saying down here. Peter is gonna disappear. Cody was just added, Letitia's getting added, and Peter's is gonna go away. Watch for it, wait for it. Here we go, it's still working, still doing its thing. All right, there we go. I'm sorry, not Peter's gonna go away. Melissa's went away. I deleted Melissa's, my bad. But see how it's all in order right there? It finished the script. And if I go to Letitia, it goes to Letitia Unit 8. This is self-working there. So whenever you have new students add, or if you have kids get out of class, make sure you hit sync student tabs because you wanna keep the data for the students you have already. That's important right there. Okay, now, next we're gonna populate some data here, all right? Let's let me go ahead and uh, get rid of this. We'll put it back to 150. And let me go to uh, Cody's sheet here, for example. Let's have him earn some grades. All right. Okay, you see what I mean? Let me actually zoom out a little bit further here. There we go. And let's just let Cody have 100 here so far. And let's just copy this and let's just put an H here, an H here. I'm just going to clone this to all the sheets. All right, give me a second. I apologize, right? And then we'll just do this right here, okay? So this is what it looks like so far, all right? Let's just focus on Cody, all right? Other students can run other grades, but Cody's sheet looks like this. Now, okay, how does Cody get this information? All right, well, first of all, you let me, let me actually answer that in a second. Let's go to the sheet that says, uh, many of you have asked in the past about Melissa and these student averages. I wanna have a sheet that summarizes them all at once. Well, look at the student averages tabs. There you go, right? Check it out. Right now, Cody's at 100% for unit one and any grades I put in for all the other guys will follow suit. And this column L will be the average of the averages, if you will, okay? But th that, ta that table will fill in over time, okay? Now, the most important question, how do I share this with students, parents, guardians, administrators, case managers? I'm telling you, you walk, I've walked into a PPT meeting for a student with a, with, a, with a PDF grade sheet to share everybody. And everyone's like, whoa, this is pretty cool. Because here, this qualitative data tells a story with respect, with respect to students' learning outcomes and on what concepts on which they've demonstrated mastery or have yet to demonstrate mastery, okay? So to do that, you wanna actually have email addresses here. Now, I get this from PowerSchool all the time. So you know how in PowerSchool or whatever platform your school uses, you, got, you can get the student's email address the, and the parent and guardian ones. So I'm going to use an email address that I don't use anymore, just to show you here. All right. And if you want to put more than one, you just separate it with a comma. Okay. So uh, I get that right there. And you could just keep typing email, comma, email, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But I'm just going to use one just to illustrate. I'm just going to do the same one four times like I have four kids. God help me. All right. So there we go. Watch this, this is cool. Now in the BTC menu, when you're ready to share averages with parents and guardians and with students, right? All I need to do is click on that email PDFs to class list. That's it. Uh, people, long time users of this, gone are the days of having to you know, get a Google folder with a PDF in it that just clutters up the inbox, whatever like that. that no, 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 that's all gone. We're not gonna mess with anybody's Google Drive at all. All right, we're just gonna email one PDF to anyone who's on this master list right here. That's it, okay? And so watch this, email PDFs, here we go. And I'm gonna sneak out here, watch this. I'm gonna sneak out here and look at 
uh, that Gmail for that account that I don't use anymore. Look at this. This is the account email that I typed in under updates. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Look at this. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. It should be coming soon. All right. Under the uh, up, it'll, it should appear under the updates tab. Let me refresh again. Look at that. Grading rubric for Cody B. Grading rubric for Tim B. Look at that. Let me look at Cody's grading rubric. And there is a message from the teacher right there. Oh, teachers, guess what? Yes, you can change that custom message. I'll show you how to do that very last. But let's look at the PDF that was sent me here. Look at this. Isn't that, isn't that the latest version of what I have? That's what I typed in the Google Sheet as a teacher, right? That's it. Short, sweet, simple, done at the click of a button. That's all Melissa McCain's genius. I had nothing to do with that. So be sure to thank her next time you see her. All right. Now, let me uh, go back here for a second. All right. Um, right here. So this is the email that came automatically from the teacher, but you might want to put a custom message in and that's okay. So to do that, let's go back and see how to do that here. If you want to send a, a custom message, all you need to do is go to settings, the settings tabs right here. All right. Check it out. Now you can actually, you can actually copy this, delete it. You can delete it. I mean, and just type in a message of your own. So dear students, parents, and guardians oops i don't hit uh when you want to hit enter you need to hit control enter that lets you actually hit return in a cell because hitting enter or return will not like go to the next line in the cell you have to hit control plus enter that's key just got to do, do that um attached please find the latest the latest uh um uh let's see attached please find the latest progress Uh, re with regarding your uh, uh, unit one geometry grade, or whatever you want to say. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, control, uh, uh, Mr. B. Now watch this. I'm going to send myself that email one more time. This is beautiful. Look at this. I'm going to email BTC menu, email PDFs to class list right there. Oh, look at this, BTC menu, email PDFs to class list. Here we go, baby. Watch this. Sending an email again. Running the script. Let's go to my email and see if it comes in. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Here we go. I'm going to go back to my invite updates there. These were the old ones that I got from the, the previous one, but let me hit refresh again. That's yeah, fine. Oh, there's new. Came see 957. This one came at 959 a.m. This one's brand new. Let's look on that. See? custom message sent. It is done. All right. So that's beautiful. And let's talk about the backfill toggle switch really quickly. For those of you that know about backwards ability when it comes to having students earn grades. Okay. You know what I'm talking about here. It defaults to off, right? So in theory, right? If a student can actually solve a problem at an advanced level, they clearly know how to solve it at a basic and intermediate level as well. So there may be cases where a teacher would want where, where a teacher puts a, a check in advanced and they would also want to see a check appear in intermediate and also in basic. Because what happens next if they do the second time they attempt an advanced question, second time they don't get it, right? Well, we would like to have something to fall back on, like on intermediate or basic, to help show that, hey, they definitely have demonstrated mastery of it at you know this level here and this level here but again this check alone right here is not actually indicating that at all so if you want to turn that on what you do is go here and where it says backfill off just click it and it'll turn it on watch this now this is pretty cool backfill is now on okay so watch this now soon as i try another advanced question right here right notice that and i get it right look here there will be two checks that also appear under basic and intermediate, if that makes sense. It's taken time, but they will show there it is, and there it is. Took a while, but it's there, right? So watch this. If a student can show check at inter, show mastery at an intermediate level, let's say um, you know they they here they went they worked in a group under basic, but then the first time they tried an intermediate, well, they they got it right. Demonstrate a mastery on day three. Well, see how that check just appeared right there? There you go. Because what happens now 
if, well, didn't happen again, <clears throat> nothing's going to appear here, right? But in essence, this is like a time saver for teachers because as soon as you know, a student can now watch this. This is where the this is where it's at. Now, the next day I get an intermediate question right. That means I also can do it at the basic level. So clearly, even though I haven't earned mastery at the intermediate level yet, I definitely have at the basic level because I see those two checks in a row. So turning that toggle switch on is very powerful for teachers that emphasize the backwards compatibility of that. Now, in the last couple of years, when I see a student be able to do an advanced question, and I know the basic and intermediate problems come with it, I would manually put checks in there. And then, you know, while that advanced question had an X say, but here I don't have to do that anymore. So putting that toggle switch on is very powerful when you want your grades to truly reflect the backwards compatibility that Peter talks about in BTC. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. Uh, our contact info can be found on the website, tinyurl.com slash BTC rubric. Again, tinyurl.com slash BTC rubric. Um, we wish you and your students much success on your teaching and learning journeys within your thinking classroom.